Hello everyone, welcome to Salesforce Atlas. My name is Dorisa, if you're new to the channel. I hope that you're doing great. And uh, in today's episode, I would like to discuss with you how to create email to case and how to create the routing. I'll be using Gmail in this example, but you can use an email service provider for routing emails to your Salesforce environment and create cases. And as always, I'm in one of my Trailhead playgrounds. I have already created uh, and enabled email to case. I'll be using the old routing. I'll just show you the basics, how to do it. And I'm going to test as well and create a case from my email. And um, so first of all, you have to go into email to case if you want to route your, case, your emails to Salesforce and generate the case. Let's start with email to case. I'm in setup and I've opened already this page email to case. I have uh, created routing. I'm going to be using the old one. Don't want to share share the full information of this routing in case in case this video is going to be taken down again. But to enable your email to case, you have to tick this checkbox. So first you start with enabling it. Then you select whether to notify case owners on new emails or not. Then enable HTML templates so you can create a more rich text templates um, in your email instead of uh, only using plain text and uh, set case source to email. Now in cases, we have this. Now, if I go into details, we have case origin. So automatically email to case is going to create email case origin. And that's what you would be looking for. Save email to case attachments as Salesforce files. If you are receiving any attachments with your emails, then you most likely want to save these attachments as well in Salesforce. And uh, there are two ways, there are Salesforce files and there are attachments. So if you disable this checkbox, then your email to case attachments can still be in Salesforce, but they will not be created as Salesforce files. And you can look into this. Um, maybe you don't really need to save them as Salesforce files and attachments is just fine for you and uh, eliminate duplicate email attachments. So if you hover over this information, when attachments are saved as Salesforce files, remove duplicate attachments from the case. So if you have both attachments and Salesforce files enabled, you might end up with creating duplicate files. And you can also invoke triggers and status change from new to red. And if you hover over, it also tells you when emails open in case feeds or from email message records in Lightning, the email status change invokes triggers. In cases, if I just go down and in this feed section, uh, we have these standard, we have standard tabs, all updates, emails, call logs, text, posts, status changes. And in emails, we also have, I don't want to oops, show too much information again. Uh, we have... Uh, emails if we go back now if you read those emails then from new it will the status will change to red that's what it means and you can either tick it or untick it you can test it as well and see if that's for you and send emails from cases uh, place user signature before email threads now the user signatures if you create a user signature then uh, replying here we have this email console here. If you type in anything, then it will automatically add your email signature before any threads. But first, you also have to create this email signature. In this on-demand service section, I have checked the box for enable on-demand service. And I just let Salesforce to handle incoming emails for me. I can see the email to case on-demand service converts customer emails into cases or adds them into them to existing cases. So it will match either contact uh, contact name, contact IDs, or email domains. It will match them, find them, match them with cases, and add all other emails that are coming into for the specific user. And uh, you can also decide how you want Salesforce and email to case handle emails that surpass your organization's daily email processing limit or emails from blocked senders. You can go ahead and as well test this section right here. And at the bottom, you will find the uh, routing addresses and you go. I'm not going to show you the one I've created just in case the video gets taken down again. I'm going to select this new button here in the routing information. 
as it says, you put your routing name. So you just, just give it a name, let's say Gmail routing or support routing, then uh, email address. So that's the mailbox you will be using uh, for routing your emails. Maybe that's a shared mailbox in Outlook or in Gmail. You just put the now, email address in here, then you decide whether to save email headers or not, and whether you want to limit uh, the amount of accepted emails. Um, and also, if you have a rover, you will see here, you have also very good dis um, descriptions here. And next, you can, in the task settings, you can also check this checkbox and you can create tasks from your emails and also give your tasks a status. Maybe it is in progress or already completed if you don't want to return to this task, but you just want to record it as a task. I'm going to untick it. And then case settings, you decide who is the owner of these cases. Maybe that's a queue and case priority, high, medium, low, and the case origin. Most likely it's going to be email. So whenever you have a new case coming in, it will be assigned to specific queue with a specific case priority and the case origin. Now I'm going to cancel this as I have already created the routing. And uh, let's check what we have here. I guess that's it. I will show you another screen in Gmail. I'm just trying to be very careful with not showing again too much of personal information and I'm going to just move this All right I'm going to move this window right here and I'm in Gmail as you can see in settings you can go into all settings it starts with general then all settings and this is the place where you add the forwarding address when you click on it you add forwarding address and the forwarding address is going to be the one provided by Salesforce. Once you have created the routing address in Salesforce, you will get a unique email address that ends with uh, force.com or something like that. You will put it in here. This is going to be your Salesforce email address. So all incoming mail is going to be routed to Salesforce. Then you just click save, or click next or save, whatever is asked, and just save the settings. I have already created routing in my Gmail. Once you have enabled it in your email, you will be receiving another email. And I have this email right here. I've changed some details just to hide my personal information, but you will receive an email and as well your unique number to verify these changes you will find it in cases and it will be a request to automatically forward mail to your email address i've changed some details here and you will be um, getting a confirmation code and you can just follow the link confirm the changes and that's it then your routing is ready you can just start testing it and create cases from your emails you have to bear in mind that if your routing is on and it is a very active mailbox, all those emails will be turned into cases in Salesforce. So you have to keep in mind, uh, maybe you want to add some additional rules, but be maybe very specific or definitely use email to case for mailbox that is specifically meant for cases, for raising cases like a support mailbox. All right. I have just now sent an email from my mobile device to that uh, Gmail address, and uh, it should now route that email that email to Salesforce and generate a case. Now, if I go and refresh the page, then I can see that I have just created a new case. Well, I hope that you liked the video and thanks a lot for getting this far. I really wanted to share with some more details about email to case. However, I have to be very careful with my personal information as one of the videos was actually taken down because I did the video email to case months ago, but it is very straightforward. There's a lot of information. I'm going to share uh, help articles as well. Just bear in mind, once you enable email to case, then 
all incoming emails will be forwarded to Salesforce. Go ahead, test it, use the flow to pre-populate fields as well in your cases. And I uh, hope this will work out for you. Um, thanks a lot for getting this far in the video and I'll see you next time. Bye.